Good morning. Uh, it's good to have you all here and good to be with you here this morning, the third Sunday in Lent. Uh, this is the Sunday where we get kind of this, uh, this gruesome picture on the front, but it, it is gruesome. Uh, the unclean spirit coming out of a person, that's a, a reference to the gospel reading. And I'll be preaching on the gospel reading on Wednesday. Our Lenten service will be over at Grace this week. Uh, but the word there on the front is oculi, uh, and that means eyes. Uh, and it comes from Psalm 25 where it says, my eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he will pluck my feet out of the net. Uh, I think the net is, is death in the context. Uh, but that's what oculi, mean. oculi means. It means eyes. Um, there are a few announcements that I would like to draw to your attention before the service begins. Uh, the first is that as you came in the front door, because this door is broken, you may have seen that there are a, are a number of baked goods. Uh, these are part of a funding drive for our mites. Uh, this is a, a bake sale uh, as a fundraiser for our mites. So if you have uh, money in your pocket or a checkbook, or uh, I think we'll accept IOUs for the moment, uh, uh, that this money uh, goes to a number of projects uh, in, our, in our country and around the world, uh, some of which you know, I myself have benefited from when I, when I was a seminarian, for example. Uh, they go to uh, everything from... Uh, group homes for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities, to training seminarians, to building schools and housing for children in Kenya, to teaching English as a second language in places like, uh, you know, well, all over the world, really. Um, so uh, stop by the table if, if you have uh, money, a change in your pocket, um, and, and take some baked goods, of course, in return. Uh, but that's what that is back on the table, so do stop by there if you haven't already. Uh, back to the bulletin. Uh, in May, there is going to be an LWML mission bus uh, that looks like it's going to make a number of stops. Uh, it'll be Friday and Saturday, May 13th and, and, and 14th. Uh, it's going to be featuring a presentation from uh, missionary Adam Lehman, uh, who is in Puerto Rico now, but I think had been in Spain before, so it should have a very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, CLS is sponsoring a scrap metal drive again. That'll be coming up in April, uh, on Saturday, April 2nd. Um, that same day in the afternoon will be the installation for the new pastor at Westgate. Um, his name is Kent Peck. He's coming to us from Kansas. His installation will be in the afternoon on that Saturday, so I'll see if I can slip that in the bulletin uh, in case there's any here who would like to go to that. Uh, looking ahead at the schedule for this week, I will be a little scarce uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, Community Lutheran School is being reaccredited and I have some responsibilities uh, with that this week. Uh, so Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I, I mostly won't be around. I'll be over either at Klinger uh, or in Reedland. So if you're looking for me, uh, just use my cell phone. Um, that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, it will be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but it won't affect our, our worship on Wednesday or Members of Grace uh, Bible study on Thursday. Uh, so just make note of that. If you can't find me this week, uh, I'll probably be in Reedland. Uh, just use my cell phone. Our order of service this morning is going to be setting three, uh, but our opening hymn is hymn 592, hymn 592.
This morning we follow divine service setting three, beginning on page 184. Uh, please note that we are in Lent, uh, so after the Kyrie, we, we turn the page and continue with the salutation. Uh, we don't sing the glory next shall cease in Lent. I invite you to stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Psalm 136. Give thanks to, God, to the God of heaven, for his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods, for his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who by understanding made the heavens, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who spread out the earth above the waters, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who made the great lights, for his steadfast love endures forever. The sun to rule over the day, for his steadfast love endures forever. The moon and stars to rule over the night, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who struck down the firstborn of Egypt, for his steadfast love endures forever, and brought Israel out from among them, for his steadfast love endures forever. With a strong hand and an outstretched arm, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who divided the Red Sea in two, for his steadfast love endures forever, and made Israel pass through the midst of it, for his steadfast love endures forever, but overthrew Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who led his people through the wilderness, for his steadfast love endures forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give thanks to the God of heaven, for his steadfast love endures forever. Lord, have mercy upon us. 
Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the third Sunday in Lent is from Exodus chapter 8. Then the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Stretch out your staff and strike the dust of the earth so that it may become gnats in all the land of Egypt. And they did so. Aaron stretched out his hand with his staff and struck the dust of the earth, and there were gnats on man and beast. All the dust of the earth became gnats in all the land of Egypt. The magicians tried by their secret arts to produce gnats, but they could not. So there were gnats on man and beast. Then the magicians said to Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. But Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he would not listen to them, as the Lord had said. Then the Lord said to Moses, Arise up early in the morning and present yourself to Pharaoh as he goes out to the water and say to him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. Or else, if you will not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies on you and your servants and your people and into your houses. And the houses of the Egyptians shall be filled with swarms of flies and also the ground on which they stand. But on that day, I will set apart the land of Goshen, where my people dwell, so that no swarms of flies shall be there, that you may know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. Thus I will put a division between my people and your people. Tomorrow this sign shall happen. And the Lord did so. There came great swarms of flies into the house of Pharaoh and into his servants' houses. Throughout all the land of Egypt, the land was ruined by the swarms of flies. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Ephesians chapter 5. Therefore, be imitators of God, as beloved children, and walk in love, as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness must not even be named among you, as is proper among saints. Let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking, which are out of place, but instead let there be thanksgiving. For you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure or who is covetous, that is, an idolater, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not associate with them. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. 
Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand as we speak the tract. To you I lift up my eyes, O you who are enthroned in the heavens. Behold, as the eyes of servants look to the hand of their master, so our eyes look to the Lord our God till he has mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy upon us. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 11th chapter. Glory to thee be to thee, O Lord. Now Jesus was casting out a demon that was mute. When the demon had gone out, the mute man spoke, and the people marveled. But some of them said, he casts out demons by Beelzebul, the prince of demons. While others, to test him, kept seeking from him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste, and a divided household falls. And if Satan also is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say that I cast out demons by Beelzebul. And if I cast out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they will be your judges. But if it is by the finger of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his own palace, his goods are safe. But when one stronger than he attacks him and overcomes him, he takes away his armor in which he trusted and divides his spoil. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it passes through waterless places seeking rest, and finding none, it says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds the house swept and put in order. Then it goes and brings seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that person is worse than the first. As he said these things, a woman in the crowd raised her voice and said to him, Blessed is the womb that bore you and the breasts at which you nursed. But he said, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and keep it. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Let us together confess our faith as Christians using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with the hymn of the day, hymn 659. look at the bottom of the page for this hymn you know how the hymnal goes we have the, the hymnal we have the hymn and then at the bottom of the page we always have the the who is the author of the text and and then the tune uh, and if you look at the dates for the author of this text uh, 1594 to 1648 uh, that is right in the bulk of it uh, what was called the 30 years war in germany uh, which was a 30-year war between uh, the Roman Catholics and the Protestants. And I think uh, one-third of Germany died uh, during this period uh, of religious conflict. Uh, and uh, a lot of the hymns that we sing actually come from this period. Um, uh, How brightly shines the morning star, awake, awake, for night is flying, why should cross and trial grieve me? Uh, these guys all lived during this time. And we think we live in a time now where we are surrounded by war. 
It seems it has always been that way. Uh, and the author of this hymn encourages us to find our peace not in this earthly kingdom, uh, but in Christ's kingdom, uh, in the forgiveness of sins uh, and the hope of the new kingdom that is to come in the resurrection. And so we, we sing this hymn today uh, as we heard about this, this demon in the, uh, in the gospel text, but it's also uh, comfort for us and encouragement to seek our peace uh, not here but in Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. For the last couple weeks, we've been brushing up our memories and our confession of faith concerning the sacrament of holy baptism. We've remembered already how baptism is not just plain water, but water included in God's command and combined with His Word. Last week, we confessed our faith that far from doing nothing, baptism brings many great blessings. Through baptism, God forgives us our sins, He rescues us from death and from the devil, and He unites us to the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Just as He was raised to the glory of God the Father, so we who are united to Him by baptism and by faith shall be as well. Today we confess our faith and how baptism can do these great things. The power of baptism to confer these blessings is not in the water. Throughout history, and, and even now, there are some who, who believe that. No, it is not the water that does it. It is the Word of God in the water. The Holy Spirit works through the Word in the water to bestow faith upon us. And faith receives these great blessings. Without the Word, it is just water. But with the Word, baptism is a life-giving water. It is the Word that gives baptism its power. And so let's go ahead and turn back to the Catechism in our hymnal, just as we have the last couple weeks. Page 325, which I've been saying every week, is the same year that we get the Nicene Creed that we just confessed before the hymn. That comes from 325. Well, mostly. Ah. Today we are on the third part of holy baptism. And we'll speak it as we normally do. I'll ask the question and we'll answer it together. We are on the third part of holy baptism. Page 325. How can water do such great things? Certainly not just water... But the word of God in and with the water does these things along with the faith which trusts this word of God in the water. For without God's word, the water is plain water and no baptism. But with the word of God, it is a baptism that is a life-giving water, rich in grace, and a washing of the new birth in the Holy Spirit as St. Paul says in Titus chapter 3, He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom He poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by His grace, we might become heirs having the hope of eternal life. This is a trustworthy saying. Uh, and if that passage sounds familiar... Uh, that Titus passage is the epistle reading for Christmas Day. So if it sounds familiar outside the catechism, that's because, well, Luther would have heard that Christmas Day and preached on it just as we do. Uh, when we get into the Office of the Keys, there's another passage that is a Sunday text that is also in the catechism. So I wonder if they're connected. To help us get a good mindset concerning this part of baptism, let's consider for a moment the Old Testament account of Naaman. We read in 2 Kings chapter 5 that Naaman was commander of the army of the king of Syria. And he was held in high favor by his master because by Naaman the Lord had given victory to Syria. Naaman, however, was a leper. 
And it happened that on one of the raids, the, the Syrians carried off a little girl from Israel, and, and she ended up working in Naaman's household. And she said to his wife, Would that my Lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria. He would cure him of his leprosy. Naaman went to the king, and the king sent him to Jehoram, who was the king of Israel at the time, and, and Jehoram was not a good king. Uh, when Jehoram read the letter from the king of Syria saying that Naaman should be cured of his leprosy, he, he tore his clothes. But Elisha the prophet sent word that Naaman should come to him. And when Naaman got there with his, his chariots and, and silver and gold and I think 10 changes of clothing, so extravagant gifts for Elisha, he didn't even come out of the house, but, but he sent a message to Naaman that said, go and wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh shall be restored and you shall be clean. Initially, Naaman didn't want to go. He thought that Elisha, as this prophet of God, should have, he should have come out and done something interesting. I, I think the text is that he would, should have waved his hand over the place and cure the leper, or at least do something worth the trip. But at the suggestion of his servants, Naaman did go to the river. And when he had dipped himself seven times, according to the promise of God through Elisha, Naaman was cured. And as Naaman himself was, was so quick to point out, there, there was nothing special about the Jordan River. The rivers in Damascus might very well have been better, more appetizing to, to bathe in. But what the Jordan River had was the word and promise of God through Elisha. It was the word that healed Naaman through the water. When we hear it in the lectionary, this comes up, I forget when, but we hear it, uh, it stops right there, but it, it's not the end of Naaman's story, because if you keep reading, uh, the Holy Spirit worked through the word that was preached by Elisha, and Naaman became a Christian. Uh, and these were his words after he was cleansed. Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel. And Naaman before had been, been a pagan. He worshipped idols. Now, Naaman's washing was not a baptism. It, it was something else. But it, it does help us to think correctly about baptism. Because the same thing that cured Naaman of his leprosy and that called him to faith is also what gives baptism its power. It's the Word of God. The Word of God is the instrument of the Holy Spirit to give the forgiveness of sins, to rescue from death and the devil, and to grant eternal salvation in and with the waters of holy baptism. Through the same washing of water and the Word, the Holy Spirit also creates faith in our hearts, which receives these blessings. Faith does not make baptism baptism, just as faith is not what makes the Lord's Supper Christ's body and blood, but faith receives these blessings. And by word of God in baptism, we mean what we said a few weeks ago. Specifically, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. These are the words that Jesus gave us to use in baptism, and, and we should not seek some other formulation of what to say. In the administration of baptism, when, when it's actually happening, it doesn't have to be those exact words because otherwise we'd all have to learn Greek in order to baptize. And I guess I would be okay, but you guys would have to brush up a little bit. You know, however, the words spoken should be in keeping with the sense and with the intention of Christ's institution. And so, for example... In the book of Acts, if you read the book of Acts, there are a few occasions where people are baptized simply in the name of Jesus. And this is not a different baptism. It's fine because it's understood that Jesus was the second person of the Trinity, that he was the redeemer of the world, that baptism is for the forgiveness of sins, and that's why they were being baptized. However, a baptism in a church that denies the Trinity, for example, 
would not be valid, even if they were to, to speak the words. It would be invalid because that church body rejects Christ's word, and, and it's not intending to keep his command. You know, we, we sang in the opening hymn, Dearest Jesus, We Are Here, in which is a baptism hymn, and it talks about bringing this child here to the font to receive the blessings that Christ has promised. In a way, churches that baptize while denying what God teaches about baptism are mocking him, and we don't want to do that. Because it is the word in baptism that does all the work, even though baptism might be a, a simple little thing in our eyes that takes only a moment, it is truly a washing of rebirth and renewal. In baptism, the Holy Spirit creates in our hearts the gift of faith. And, and by this faith, we are born again. As Jesus said to Nicodemus, we become children of God, new creations in Christ. By baptism, we receive the Holy Spirit himself into our hearts. And he leads us to put to death our own sinful flesh, our, our old ways of living that St. Paul talked about in the epistle text, and to take up our crosses. He creates in our hearts new and God-pleasing desires so that we should live in purity and in righteousness and holiness all our days. So how does baptism do what it does? It's not the water that does it. It's not the pastor or, or whoever it might be that does it. It is the word of God in the water that makes baptism a saving flood. May the Lord preserve his word among us always and grant us to be faithful to the calling with which we have been called. As he has given us life through his word, so may he keep us until our life is found totally at Christ's return. In Jesus' name, amen. Now the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. The offertory is found beginning on page 192. I invite you to stand as we sing. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Merciful God, you do not change and are always ready to hear our prayer. May our eyes be ever fixed on you, that we would always be ready to receive your forgiveness and help in time of need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, we thank you that Christ has disarmed the devil and liberated us by his blood, bringing us into his ranks together with all the saints. Preserve all Christians in the faith until life's end. Do not permit anyone to abandon or blaspheme your spirit's work and the forgiveness of sins. Turn us in brotherly love toward one another to live always according to your holy will. Lord, in your mercy... Hear our prayer. Lord God, you call us to live in purity and holiness. Protect and guide Christian families to love and seek chastity and decency, learning to grow in virtue and all godly living. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Almighty God. No kingdom divided against itself can stand, and a house divided must fall. Graciously preserve our nation with its government. Frustrate the work of Satan and the seeds of destruction he would sow in every place where he not stayed by your gracious hand. Unite our leaders and our people for a common good while leading us to hope in that eternal kingdom which is not of this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, the strength of the weak, hear our prayers for all who are sick, anxious, lonely, or oppressed in any way, especially the shut-ins of our congregation and those whom we name in our hearts. Overcome the devil and his demons, that he would not lead any into despair, and grant your healing and cleansing power to rest upon their bodies and minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed Lord, you join your word to the bread and wine, and so invite us to eat and drink. Grant that we may hear and keep your word in faith, that we may worthily receive the true body and blood of our Savior, and so be given your eternal blessing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed Lord, the mother of your son was blessed because she heard your word and kept it. Grant that we who hear your word would also treasure it in our hearts and so receive your eternal blessing. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night on which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Oh, oh Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with hymn 437. In 437. I invite the congregation to stand for the dismissal. Now this, the true body and blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. We continue by singing the Nunc Dimittis. thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word for mine eyes have seen thy salvation which thou hast prepared before the face of all people Allah I to and the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another, 
Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with our closing hymn, hymn 523.